I think we'll be tempted to think that one of these errors is a bigger deal than the other, but I want to show you that it's not. First is, in, is, in, is saying we believe in Christ or saying we follow Christ and maintaining, maintaining control over our own identity. Saying we know Christ and maintaining control over our own identity. Now this can happen in varying degrees. You have people in the church who are building their identity, their self-determined identity in a whole host of ways. The world in the flesh longs to build its own, devise its own answers to the questions, who am I and what is my purpose? It's what the world does. And as a church, when we're not deeply rooted in Christ, we're not living the way, truth, and life of Jesus, it's very easy to be tempted to embrace the thinking of the world and the way of the world and to begin to think, I ought to be the one who has the power over determining my own identity. There's people who grew up in church or maybe just came to faith in Jesus and you're in Christ and maybe this hasn't been discipled into you yet. But hear me, when we come, through, when we come to faith and then we come through the baptism waters, like what we're proclaiming is, I no longer have a right to determine my own identity. If you claim to follow Jesus, the biblical truth is that Jesus determines your identity. He does. But we have a tendency, a fleshly desire to control our own identity. I think this is a growing issue within the church where people claim to follow Jesus but want to define who they are and where their joy is going to come from. No wonder they don't know all the promises that we as a church don't know all the promises of God in our experience. We demand our own identity and we get our, the level of happiness that we can get from the identity that we've developed rather than wrapping ourselves in the identity of Christ and gaining access to all of the joy that God gives. Following Jesus means surrendering that control. The world tells us to define ourselves by our sexuality, by our race, by our gender, by our ideologies. All of this is slippery. In Christ, though, we have a new identity, and we are not given the room to determine our identity based on our gender and our sexuality and our race and all of these other things. It's not something that God wants us to build our identity in. And listen, I'm not talking about culture here. God loves culture. I think that it's beautiful when a church, when a people come together and all sorts of cultures are there and we're celebrating culture and we're rejoicing in culture. But hear me, every one of us has a culture that has been deeply impacted by sin. And we have to become the sort of people, as we're in the Word, where we're able to discern what is culture and what is broken culture. Because there's a difference. There's a big difference between loving certain kinds of food and celebrating certain kinds of music that aren't necessarily sinful in and of themselves and, you know, having a way that we relate to each other, you know, handshaking versus kissing on the cheek and all those sort of things. You know, you got all kinds of things that are cultural. But when those cultural things become, are rooted in, in sin, that those cultural things have to be transformed. But it doesn't mean their, the culture goes away. It means the culture is transformed. Do you understand what I mean? So we've got to make that differentiation. I'm not talking about culture. We're not talking about uniformity in the church. We're talking about bringing sin to nothing in our hearts. We don't get to define our own identity. We're called to find our identity and our satisfaction in Christ alone to embrace his identity and join in his work and purposes for our lives and you're going to think that's the re really bad one compared to this one but I don't think that scripture teaches that, that it's sort of this is worse or this is better the second major error is more like Jonah's error claiming a godly identity like claiming a right identity while willfully living in disobedience and rebellion. Do you understand the difference? One says, I'm in Christ, but I get to choose my own identity. The other error is, I'm in Christ, and here's my identity in Christ. I've got all the right answers, but I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. 
As long as it's secret and it doesn't impact anybody else, it's going to be just fine. That's a massive error in thinking. There are many who proudly wear the label of Christian or child of God or disciple of Jesus, but their actions just don't align with their profession, their professed identity in Christ Jesus. And it's those same people who are demonizing the people who are lost, who are just embracing the identity they've chosen. Most people in the church who are humble enough to know Christ, to walk with Christ, and to choose to submit to Christ and be obedient to Christ, and li- they're not out throwing stones at people who are choosing to live according to their flesh because they don't know Jesus. They're actually brokenhearted, people who God is shaping and God is working in and God is with, and they're seeking to make sure their identity and their actions are matched and they're humble enough and allowing the Spirit to do those things. They never pick up stones and toss them at people who are embracing an identity they have chosen in the world because they don't know Jesus. It's a heart issue. And if God's doing work in our hearts... He's going to do a work in our actions. And if he's doing a work in our actions, he's going to give us compassion for the people who cannot see the truth about God's identity and God's joy and all the goodness that God wants to pour out on their lives. What they're going to do instead of throwing stones is to get up and run and proclaim the good news of a changed identity in Christ and a new freedom and joy that we have in knowing the King of Kings. You know, this disconnect between our words and actions, it isn't just a problem for our witness to other people. It's a threat to our our very own spiritual health. Because the root problem, what's causing, you know, you can have a big, beautiful tree in your front yard. Leaves, you know, starts to do some funny things. But it's not major funny things, it's minor funny things. Like more branches than are supposed to fall off are falling off. And the leaves have a little bit of a funny look. But generally, if you're not educated about trees, it looks like a really great tree. But you know what those little evidence, those itty-bitty evidences are? Root rot. Root rot. Root rot is pride in the human heart that says, you know, I can maintain this sin as long as it's not hurting anybody else. But that 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 root rot's affecting the whole tree. And eventually that tree's coming down. You know what? There's good news. God doesn't expose our hypocrisy to shame us. He does it to bring us back to him. When he reveals the disconnect between our identity and our actions, it's an invitation to realign who who he's created us and called us to be. Realign our lives with who he's created us and called us to be. It's an opportunity to confess where we've gone off track and to ask for God's help and for the body of Christ's help in living out our true identity in Jesus. God's grace is relentless, and he's given you everything that you need to deal with the realities of your heart. 